We've talked about this a little bit already, but here it is officially. <laughs> arteries carry blood away from the heart. Arteries divide into smaller arteries called arterioles. An arterioles is just a small, really small artery. Arterioles deliver blood to capillaries, and it's the capillaries where the action happens. That's where you actually get exchange of materials between what's in the bloodstream and what's outside of the bloodstream. And then the blood that passes from the capillaries drains into venules, which are little bitty veins. And then those merge to form large veins, and then the veins carry the blood back to the heart. Now, here is your part of this. If you look at a typical <laughs> if you look at a typical artery or a typical vein, <clears throat> there are three <coughs> layers to that wall of that blood vessel. The innermost layer, the layer that's touching the blood, is called the tunica intima. Some textbooks call it the tunica interna. I don't care which term you use. I just hate that they give you two. I don't know what your lab lawyer calls it. Tunica intima, tunica interna, same thing. Beneath that, is a layer of smooth muscle. Call the tunica media. And outside of that is a layer of connective tissue called the tunica externa. or the adventition. Now, one of the differences, a couple of differences between arteries and veins, one of the obvious differences is that the tunica media of an artery is much thicker than the tunica media of a vein. The blood pressure inside of an artery is much higher than inside a vein, and so for one thing, you just need more muscle, you need more strength, so that the, the artery doesn't rupture. So arteries have to have more muscle, a thicker tunica media, to withstand the blood pressure. This is the tunica intima. It has three little parts to it. You have the endothelium, that's just simple squamous epithelial tissue. Remember that the endothelium is continuous with the endocardium. Are we talking about no speed bumps? So the lining of the um, chambers of the heart is continuous with the lining of the chambers, uh, the lining of the blood vessels, or inner lining of the blood vessels. Then you got a little bit of connective tissue, a little American cheese here, the Swiss cheese here, and some elastic tissue. So your tunica interna or tunica intima is basically some connective tissue and some squamous epithelial tissue. Another difference between arteries and veins. Notice that the tunica intima is ruffled in an artery, and it's not. You got you got ruffles here. You don't have ruffles there. Again, it's a blood pressure thing. In an artery, you feel that pulse, right? And so that allows the artery to expand and contract. As the, as the pulse goes from the systolic pressure to the diastolic pressure. If you didn't have ruffles in that endothelium, it would rip, it would rupture. Does that make sense? It's like elastic waistband. The tunica media basically is mostly smooth muscle and another bit of elastic tissue, the external elastic length. And of course, the job of the smooth muscles is to control the diameter of that vessel. We talked about the fact that arteries have thicker layers to withstand pressure. But arterioles in particular have a, a great capacity to adjust their, the whole diameter of that blood vessel by the contraction or relaxation of those fluid muscles. And then the tunica external, the adventitious and connective tissue sheet basically kind of holds that blood vessel in place. This is kind of cool also. If you'll look at, if you take a section of tissue, when you look at it, you're looking at, you're looking at a kidney or whatever, 
But you can actually look at for the blood vessels, the cross section of the blood vessels. Um, this is an artery, this is a vein. Obviously, you see that the clinica media is really thick, not so much in the vein. And so when you slice through tissues, when they make those really thin slices, what happens is the vein tends to kind of collapse, it gets squished because it doesn't have as much muscle tissue to keep it open. The artery tends to stay round because the, the tunica media is thicker and the whole diameter of the vessel is smaller. And so when you're looking at a cross section of tissue, if you see a big opening that's kind of collapsed on itself, that's probably a vein. If it's still fairly round, that's probably the cross section of the artery. Now, as you move from the heart, you, the biggest arteries are called elastic arteries, and they branch to form muscular arteries or distribution arteries, and then they branch to form arterioles, which are basically the smallest type of artery. Now, elastic arteries are called elastic arteries because they have more elastic tissue than muscular tissue. And the aorta and the pulmonary trunk, when the ventricles contract and force that blood out, these elastic arteries actually stretch, the walls actually stretch, and then the elasticity, the elastic connective tissue helps them recoil. So it's almost like a second oomph to push that blood even further. So you've got the force created by the ventricles, and then the force of the walls of these arteries recoiling, pumping the blood. So it's almost like a little second oomph. Now, the elastic arteries branch to form uh, muscular arteries. In this case, you have more muscle tissue than you do elastic tissue, so you're not going to get that recoil like you would in the other ones. Um, these are things like your external carotids, um, brachial, femoral, ulnar, radial. These are the ar large arteries that, that they're called distributing arteries because they are carrying blood to specific parts of the body. Interesting thing about the femoral arteries, one of the, uh, anybody see the movie Black Hawk Down? Remember when the guy got shot in the thigh? And they were trying to get a hemostat, and, the, and the, he kept saying the, the arteries retracted up into the, into the groin. That's because of the muscular tissue. When that artery was severed, all that muscular tissue drew it up. Now the problem is the blood pressure in the femoral artery is so high that just that reaction is not enough to stop blood flow before the guy bled out. That's why he could, kept trying to get to that, to that femoral artery and it kept retracting up because of the muscle, muscle tissue in the wall. All right, arterioles are very, very small arteries, and their, their job is to get the blood to the capillaries. Now, the capillaries is where the good stuff happens. That's where the action happens. It's the capillaries that have a wall thin enough to, main, to um, allow exchange of materials between what's in the bloodstream and the tissue outside the bloodstream. The arterioles they have um, a smaller tunica medius, a thinner layer of muscle tissue, but that muscle tissue plays an important part. That smooth muscle in the walls of the arterioles actually helps control your blood pressure. Because they have a minimal to non-existent, just a very, very um, thin tunica externa, they don't have a lot of that connective tissue around the outside. And even though the tunica media is small, it's in proportion to the amount of connective tissue they have on the outside. It's more significant functionally. It's the contraction and dilation of the arterioles that is a mechanism for controlling blood pressure. The tunica media in the um, elastic arteries and in the muscular arteries, in the big arteries, those big arteries can't adjust as easily diameter-wise. It's the arterioles that have the most flexibility to be able to, to dilate and constrict. And therefore, they, they're called resistance vessels. They play the largest part, the largest role in controlling blood pressure. So if you've got uh, an arteriole here, and we said that the job of the arterioles is to get the blood of the capillaries. The smooth muscle cells relax if the oxygen level is low and or the CO2 level is high. Now, in 
in any actively metabolically active cell, that's what's going to be. That, that's the conditions that are going to exist. Because the cell is going to be using up oxygen and producing CO2. And under those conditions, the arterial dilates and so that more blood is flowing through the arterial and more blood flows through the capillaries, dropping off oxygen and picking up CO2. Does that make sense? For instance, the skeletal muscles in your butt right now are not very metabolically active. They're producing just enough energy to survive. But if we got up and ran around, then the, the more blood would be shown to your gluteus maxima. Does that make sense? Okay. And so it's a very efficient way to control where the blood is going. It goes to where it's needed. And we're going to keep coming back to this kind of theme about local control. Even in the kidneys, the area, each little thing in the kidney is controlled independently. It's called a glomerulus. We'll get there. It's a little capillary bed in, in the kidneys. But each one is controlled locally. The capillaries around the alveoli in your lungs, each one is controlled locally. Now, um, the sympathetic autonomic nervous system can stimulate what we call the peripheral capillary. These are the arterioles that are in your skin, uh, GI tract, urinary. During a fight or flight response, the sympathetic autonomic nervous system, right? Fight or flight. The, the arterioles, the smooth muscles in these, the arterioles that are in these areas, they constrict so that blood is shunned away from those areas. And then the arterioles in, uh, in the heart, in the lung, or the go to the lungs, they go to your skeletal muscles, those dilate. So that blood is shunted away from these areas and shunted to areas that need it. If you're looking at somebody, how can you tell they're afraid? Well, you say you look like you've seen a pale girl. Yeah, because what happens is the blood is shunted to the, the um, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, and the skeletal muscles away from the other stuff. And it has to do with the receptors that are on those, those muscle cells, those muscle cells. The sympathetic autonomic nervous system is releasing the same um, neurotransmitters, epinephrine and norepinephrine. But again, it's just like the acetylcholine. It depends on the cell's receptor as to what happens. In the smooth muscles in the arterioles here, it causes constriction. Smooth muscles in the arterioles in the other places are also. So we call these arterials, we call resistance, because the smaller you make a vessel, the higher the blood pressure. Just like putting your thumb over the end of the garden hose, the water sprays out further, the pressure's increased. You've made the opening smaller. The vasovasorum really means the vessels of the vessels. If you think about your aorta and even your brachial artery or your femoral artery, the tunica media of these large arteries are, the tunica, the tunica media is thick, just like your myocardium has to have vessels that penetrate that muscle tissue. The smooth muscle, the tunica media of the large arteries need their own set of blood vessels, their own blood supply, because not enough oxygen can diffuse through all that from the blood that's gone through the blood vessel. So that's what the vasovasorum is. This would be the lumen of the blood vessel. Blood would be flowing through here. Here you can see the little ruffled um, tunica interna or tunica intima. So you know that's an artery because it's got the little ruffles in it. Um, the tunica media is right in here. And then there's some, the tunica externa is the connective tissue. And you can see you've got cross sections of other arteries that, are, that's, that were cut and they cut this. But they would deliver, they would branch into capillaries, which would feed into this area. 
you had a higher magnification, you could see cross sections. 